Hi all. So in this video, we are going to discuss about semicircular canals. So we know that semicircular canals is a part of the vestibular apparatus. So usually in exams, this as such can be asked as a short note or as a diagram question. So we will see how to approach when a question like that is asked. So first we can uh, see about the functional anatomy. So we know that semicircular canal is a part of the vestibular apparatus which is present in the inner ear in the petrous part of the temporal bone. It consists of a bony labyrinth and a membranous labyrinth and the membranous labyrinth includes the utricle and saccule which are the otolith organs as well as the semicircular canals. Now after this brief introduction you can, you can draw a diagram of the semicircular canals. So this is the semicircular canal. This is the first semicircular canal which is the anterior semicircular canal. You can see that there is a bulge at the end which is called the ampulla. Now we can draw the second semicircular canal which is the posterior and then we've got the lateral semicircular canal. And all the three semicircular canal have got this bulge at the end and they open into sac like structure which is called the utricle. Now the utricle in turn ends in the endolymphatic sac. In continuation with the utricle, we've got another globular sac sac like structure which is called the saccule. So utricle and saccule are called the otolith organs. Saccule in turn is connected to the cochlea which is the organ for hearing. So in, in the inner ear, in the membranous labyrinth, the Parts semicircular canal and utricle and saccule are the vestibular organs, whereas cochlea is for hearing. Okay. Now, after this diagram, we can move on to more about the semicircular canals. So, we know that semicircular canals are arranged at right angles to each other to represent the three planes. So, we've got an anterior semicircular canal, a posterior semicircular canal, and a lateral semicircular canal. So, what is the direction of these canals? So anterior and posterior semicircular canal, they are basically vertical, oriented forward and outward at about 45 degrees from the sagittal plane. We can see that the posterior also is similar to the anterior except that it is oriented backwards. So the, you can see that these are almost perpendicular to each other. And finally, the lateral semicircular canal is horizontal, angled at about 30 degree from the horizontal plane. So these are the three semicircular canals and they are orientation. The first one is vertical forward outward at about 45 degree. Here vertical backward outward at 45 degree horizontal at 30 degree. Okay. Now what is the orientation of the semicircular canal? So from this picture itself you can understand that the right anterior has the same plane as that of the left posterior and the left anterior has the same plane as that of the right posterior. So that is the orientation. Right anterior and left posterior canals lie in one plane and left anterior and right posterior canals lie in another plane. Okay. So now we'll see more about each semicircular canal. So what is the structure? As I said before, at the end of the semicircular canal, we've got a dilated part which is called the ampulla. Now this, it is the ampulla that contains the receptor organ which is known as the crista ampullaris. Crista ampullaris. Okay, so what is crista ampullaris? We'll see the structure. So crista ampullaris basically consists of hair cells and supporting cells, and the cilia of the hair cell are embedded onto a gelatinous like structure called the cupula. Now on either side of the cupula, we've got endolymph, so that whenever there is a change in the orientation of the cupula, the hair cells are activated and the impulses goes via the nerve. So we've got the nerve that is innovate, nerve fibers that are innovating these hair cells. So whenever there's a change in the orientation of the cupula, the hair cells will be depolarized or hyperpolarized according to the direction and the impulses are transmitted on via the nerve fibers. So that is the structure of crista ampullaris. So it contains hair cells and supporting cells. The cilia project into a gelatinous material called cupula. Cupula is basically a dome shaped structure that divides the ampulla into two compartments and it, it acts like a mobile partition and the ampullary cavity contains endolymph. Okay, so now we'll see more about these hair cells that is the receptors for vestibular apparatus. So what, what are the features of the hair cells? So hair cells are the receptor cells for the vestibular system and they're basically slowly adapting mechanoreceptors. 
so see this is the basic structure of a hair cell you can see that it contains the uh, a cylinder it can be a cylindrical or flask shape and it contains the organelles and on top of the hair cell we've got a cuticular plate on top of this cuticular plate we've got the cilia so the one the first the primary or the major cilia is called the kinocilium okay so this is the kinocilium and along with the kinocilium we've got other small hair cells which are called the stereocilia so we've got one major kinocilia and the others are called stereocilia and at the end of this uh, stereocilia we've got this fine attachment so that is a small filamentous attachment which are called tiplings okay so they connect these cilia to the kinocilia right and finally when there is a depolarization of the cell the impulses are going to be transmitted to this nerve nerve fiber here okay so that that is how the hair cell works whenever there is a change in direction of the kinocilium the cell will be depolarized and the impulses are passed on to the nerve fiber so we'll see more about this mechanism in the next slide so see this is the kinocilium that we talked about so suppose when the fluid inside the semicircular canal moves what happens the endolymph suppose it moves in one direction so see suppose it is going to move in this direction so what happens you can see that the kinocilia is more bent towards this side no so what will happen to the stereocilia so suppose this is the stereocilia see actually there are potassium channels at the end of each stereocilia so see this is the stereocilia so when there is a change in the direction of that cupola what happens the orientation of the kinocilium and the stereocilia changes and we said that the stereocilia are connected to the kinocilia via tiplings there are small filamentous structures that are going to link them together so when these orientation changes the potassium channels will open up so when the stereocilia move towards the kinocilia because of the tiplings the potassium channels open up and there will be entry of potassium channel potassium now this will cause depolarization of that hair cell remember here in for hair cells the depolarization is caused by potassium and not by sodium intake so because of potassium entry there will be depolarization of the cell so what happens the calcium channels which are present at the base of the hair cell also open up which in turn lead to entry of calcium then as in any other uh, we've learned in neuromuscular transmission law know how the vesicles are open up, opened up similarly here also when there is entry of calcium the vesicles which contain the neurotransmitter will be released on to the exterior and this neurotransmitter in turn will cause will send that impulses to the nerve fiber so this is how depolarization of the hair cell occurs so see when the stereocilia move towards the kinocilia the potassium channels open up because it is connected by tiplings which will cause depolarization of the cell which in turn will cause opening of the calcium channels and thereby release a neurotransmitter into the uh, nerve fiber okay so bending towards kinocilium opens potassium channels allowing calcium entry causes depolarization bending away from kinocilium closes the potassium channels preventing calcium entry and hyperpolarization so see if the direction is the opposite it will cause hyperpolarization instead of depolarization so the direction of the change of the cilia is very important only if the stereocilia move towards the kinocilia you will have a depolarization if it is in the opposite direction you will have hyperpolarization okay so that is the difference in the receptors here so once the receptors are depolarized the changes in the hair cell activity are conveyed to the central nervous system via the vestibular part of cranial nerve a that is the vestibular cochlear nerve so in the in the vestibular part of cranial nerve a these impulses are being transmitted okay so that is the basic structure of how the semicircular canals can detect uh, the changes in hair cells and send impulses now we should know more about the functioning of the semicircular canal when does these uh, kinocilia move towards the stereocilium or when does these hair cells get depolarized or when do they get activated so we now we'll see about the functioning of semicircular canals so the receptors of the semicircular canal are stimulated by rotatory movements or angular acceleration of the head whenever we turn the head the semicircular canals are activated so we'll see how that happens so how does the semicircular canals uh, get activated when we have a rotational acceleration 
So suppose we are going to turn our head. So these are, these are the semicircular canals with the axis of the hair cell in this direction. And suppose we are going to turn our head into our left side. So what will happen? What will happen to the fluid inside the semicircular canal? We know that it is filled with endolymph. So what will happen to the endolymph inside? So just imagine you are holding a bottle of water in your hand. And suppose you are turning your hand to one direction. In what direction will the water move? It will move in the opposite direction, right? So similarly here also the endolymph has got this inertia for movement. So that will move in the opposite direction, okay? Which means the hair cells, we said the axis is in this direction, no? So what will happen when the fluid is moving in this direction? The stereocilia will come closer to the kinocilia. So there will be increased firing in one semicircular canal. What about the other semicircular canal? In this semicircular canal, the fluid motion is going to be in this direction, in the opposite direction. Which means, what will happen to the stereocilia and kinocilia here? The kinocilia will be moving away from the kinocilia. The stereocilia will be moving away from the kinocilia. So, there will be hyperpolarization and thereby cause decreased firing. So, that is how Semicircular canals can detect angular acceleration or rotational acceleration or whenever you change your, whenever you rotate your head, it is the semicircular canals that is going to be activated. So whenever there are angular movements of the head, there will be movements of the endol endolymph which pushes the cupola backwards and thereby the cilia of the hair cells bent. And if the stereocilia move away from the kinocilia, it causes hyperpolarization. And if the stereocilia move towards the kinocilia, it causes depolarization. So that is how semicircular canals function. Now one more thing we have to notice is semicircular when you when you turn your head it's not always that the semicircular canals uh, send impulses. So there is a um, method by which the semicircular canals send impulses. So we will see that in the form of a graph. So suppose we are going to uh, put the seconds and the x axis and the impulses on the y axis the impulses per second on the y axis so and suppose we are going to turn our head so we know that always the semicircular canals have got a tonic level of discharge so suppose it is say at 100 impulses per second and now we are going to rotate our head okay so this is the time at which you are going to rotate your head so when in the beginning of the rotation we can see that the impulse rate just spikes up to 400 so see, there's a, the, the maximum amount of impulse generation occurs at the beginning of the rotation. But once the rotation has attained a uniform speed, you can see that the impulse generation has decreased and it reaches a plateau even though the rotation is continuing. Now what happens when the rotation stops? We can see that when the rotation stops, for a brief period of time, there is hyperpolarization. And then it will come back to the tonic level of discharge again. So this is how the this is the time lapse showing how the semicircular canals generates impulses. So from this graph, it is clearly seen that it is at the beginning and the end of rotation that there is maximum change in impulse generation. In the beginning, you've got maximum uh, impulse generation, but after that, it comes down, it decreases, and when it stops, it actually goes into hyperpolarization. Okay, so. After 15 to 20 seconds of continuous movement at constant velocity, adaptation of receptors occur and endolymph takes up the same rate of movement as its canal. So that is why we have got a decreased impulse generation here because the, uh, the movement of endolymph is decreased and the cupola returns back to their resting membrane potential. And when the head stops moving, opposite events occur. That means the direction of the fluid changes. So you will have uh, hyperpolarization one and depolarization other. So there is more of a hyperpolarization here okay so that is how the semicircular canals function so what are the uses or functions of semicircular canal so as we said before crystal detects a rotational acceleration and thereby helps in maintaining dynamic equilibrium we said that when it was whenever the change begins or stops whenever there is a change the semicircular canal acts so it helps in the dynamic equilibrium and plays an important role in maintaining posture under dynamic conditions. Now there is one more thing they can predict ahead of time. So suppose we are going to run a race and suddenly we change the direction. 
suppose we just change the we just rotate our body so the person might go off balance okay when you do are doing such a uh, sudden change but the semicircular canal will predict that there is going to be a change in equilibrium so that is why the semicircular canals are supposed are considered to have a predictive function also so when you say about functions of semicircular canal it detects rotational acceleration maintains dynamic equilibrium maintains posture under dynamic conditions and also have a predictive function okay so finally we can just mention about some applied aspect one important applied aspect related to semicircular canal is bppv which is benign paroxysmal positional vertigo benign paroxysmal positional vertigo so what are the symptoms of this bppv so basically in this the the patient will have episodes of vertigo which is especially triggered by specific changes in body position so suppose the person was just turning in the bed or just bending over to pick up something suddenly he'll have this he or she will have this vertigo so that is called benign paroxysmal because we cannot predict when it will occur positional it is usually triggered by position okay you will have a vertigo so what is the cause for bppv so the pathophysiology is you know the otolith crystals are present in the utricle and all no so that will be trapped in the semicircular canals and that will lead to abnormal sensation with head movements because the otocornea or the otolith that is present in the otolith organs that crystals are dislodged into the semicircular canal so that will cause abnormal sensation with head movements so what is the treatment for this the most common treatment is called canalith repositioning which means there are maneuvers that try to move the otocornea out of the semicircular canal okay so the otoc they they position their head in such a way that otocornea can move out from the semicircular canal back into the utricle so that is called canalith repositioning okay so to summarize when a short note on semicircular canal is has you can first write about the functional anatomy in which you can also talk about the ampulla and the sense organ present which is a crista ampullaris and you can also mention that it is the hair cells are the receptors for this vestibular apparatus of a semicircular canals and then you can move on to mention about the mechanism of how the hair cells get depolarized and how the semicircular canals a uh, function when there when there is angular acceleration or rotation of head and also the timing you can draw the graph to show that the impulse generation is maximum at the peaks of rotation and then you can tell about the functions the how the the role of crista ampullaris in day to day life and the applied aspect uh, that is about bppv so i hope this concept is clear for you and you know what right when a, a short note like this is asked thank you